The nose of 15, part two, as amended, will stand part. We now come to debate on part three. This is clauses 63 to 68 in schedule three. The question is, at part three, stand part. Uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Chairman, I rise to uh, take a short 20-minute uh, call on part three. Uh, even if I have to read it several times in order to satisfy uh, that criterion. Uh, Chairman, I draw the House's attention to uh, clauses 63 to 68 uh, of the Bill, uh, situated as it is, sir, on pages 46 and 47 uh, of the Bill as amended and reported back uh, to the House, and not the original uh, printed version of the Bill which was on the table earlier, and which I think it is fair to say did give rise to more than a little confusion, having as it did the old part two in part two, which now resides in part one, none of which is relevant to the interjections coming from that unruly mob known as the National Backbench. You know, Mr Chairman, the extraordinary thing about that, that mob is that they'll bray when there's something to talk about and they'll bray when there's nothing to talk about and I venture to suggest that we are in the latter category now. Uh, but, Mr Chairman, uh, Clause 63 uh, is a very important clause. These are the amendments to the Principal Act that it apply for the years 2014, 2015 and later tax years. And there's something we all know about the tax year 2014 to 2015, isn't there, colleagues? That will include the first year of the next Labour Green government. The 2014-2015 will be, and it may well be, with the New Zealand First Party and Coalition. And it will be members opposites, members opposites, first year in opposition the first of their next 10 years in opposition, Mr Chairman. And they may think I'm kidding, but no, in fact, sir, I'm, I'm deadly serious on this matter uh, because, Chairman, we are now in the inner entrails of this bill. We have gone beyond the transitional provisions we have gone beyond the all-powerful Henry VIII clause. We've gone beyond the transition in part two, and we are down to the transition of the transition of the transition in part three. And, and sir, it's, it's really quite something. If I read clause 63 uh, for the benefit of the House and those riveted to their screens uh, while the House is occupying itself with this matter of import, uh, clause 63 says, and I quote, section 4 amended, brackets, interpretation, close brackets. In section 4.1, repeal of the definitions of annual gross income, annual total deduction, and pre-taxed income. And that, sir, that definition right there raises some very important issues because the first one, annual gross income, is something that a lot of New Zealanders are lamenting because the median annual gross income has declined, sir, in both nominal and real terms since the current government took office. And so if there's one thing that New Zealanders in the middle of the heap know about annual gross income, it's going down. And they are worse off, sir. And that is one reason why the 2014-15 tax year to which this refers will be the first year of the next government. Similarly, uh, pre-taxed income is in this clause, sir. A very important phrase, sir, as it brings to mind the doings of the last two days. One failed tax shot between the eyes by the Prime Minister in each of the last two days. Something of a record. We are holding our breath, sir, for tomorrow to see whether there will be a veritable trifecta of skeletal taxes laying slain upon the floor of the House, a mere flash in the pan of revenue history, rather like the reputation of the current minister who's provided over these small tinkering taxes, uh, where the grey hand of the state is inserted ever deeper, ever deeper into the wallets of New Zealanders. 
Now, it may be a laughing matter to the collector of dairy farms over there on the back row of the government benches. Uh, now, that, that dairy farm collector may not trouble himself uh, with small matters such as car park. Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman, Mr uh, Chairman. Call, uh, Holly Walker. Oh, Mr Chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chairman. I apologise to my honourable colleague. Um, perhaps he'll get to fill in the, the other 15 minutes of his 20-minute call shortly. Uh, Mr.